We are live. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 116 of the security podcast, Security in 30, on the In 30 Network. I just gave a TED Talk. Well, not really. I gave, We're recording this on Tuesday, but assumingly you're watching this now because I'm going to post it immediately after I give my TED Talk. We're, I just gave a TED Talk. And one of the things I'm going to say is if you have more information, come visit the podcast and we're going to talk more about it. So my TED Talk is on why you should have secrets. Now, my audience is a bunch of high school kids. But either way, the, the, for the most part, again, being security podcast where we deal with the average person, we want to go about why you should have secrets. We're not going to go like truly in depth of why everything needs to be completely encrypted. But the idea that we once had secrets, secrets didn't go away and why we shouldn't relax our privacy because, because we're afraid of encryption or don't want to or it's too difficult. I just want to talk about, let's go a little more of what happened. So I brought Tom in with me. He's heard my speech in some sort of early form. He saw the slides. And for the most part, he agrees with me. Yeah, I, I think the talk is is very good. It's uh, It's a clean first look into privacy, why we should have secrets, and why I have nothing to hide is just a so poor excuse. I start off really with 20 years sense. ago. I mean, and I keep on saying, what happened 20 years ago? It's, it's, Facebook wasn't around 20 years ago. And the question that I had to some people is, what happens if you wanted to develop selfies that were a little more self than E? What, what did you do? And I guess we, we came up with the conclusion of you use Polaroids or you found some one hour Photoshop really far away and you went there to never return. I don't know, Tom, did you ever have that experience? I never, but. I haven't. Like, I never actually. also owned a pool. Um, no, I, I wasn't really big into, yeah, I, I wasn't big into selfies. I, I had a cool Kodak camera with the, uh, the disc film, in which I took pictures of like trees and rocks and stuff. Cause I guess that's what kids take pictures of. But yeah, I, I never had a Polaroid or any so, reason to I mean, use one. Something happened 20 years ago, and that something is called the internet, where bandwidth and everything got really cheap and we came up with apps and everything else. But I mean, if you had photos that you wanted to show somebody, you handed it to them. You said, here's a stack of photos we want you to look at. I really get annoyed, and this was a question that I've heard way before, is when you hand someone a phone, is it okay, eth not ethically, but uh, etiquette-wise, to swipe left or swipe right? And we're not talking on Tinder or anything else. We're talking, here's a photo reel, and if someone swipes left or right, do you feel uncomfortable? For me, that's yes. I don't know about you. Yes. Yes. It is, it is a major social faux pas. When you have a phone, you say, hey, check this out, and you hand it to someone, they look at the screen, they don't touch anything. If they're watching a video, they may touch the volume controls, but that is the only thing. You don't swipe left, you don't swipe right, you don't hit home. You don't do anything. You don't even close the video when it's done. You just I hand mean, the phone back. Can I that be a little weird here and etiquette. say next to the video or the photo that you want to show them like in the timeline should maybe there shouldn't be anything i mean <sighs> I, I i think having something on your phone that you don't want to show people and you're showing them something else there should be some separation of duty here uh, even even if it's not like some crazy edward snowden approved crypto vault that you keep you know pictures of your pgp keys in or you know other stuff like that it doesn't have to be anything super crazy but an app to keep it off the main photo reel i think is probably the best choice or at least in a different folder in a different album so if you do swipe left or right you know if someone accidentally fumbles your phone and swipes a couple over they're not going to get blasted with I was going to say, we should have keys. an app that you can say demo mode where you click on what you want to show them. And if you swipe left or right, it says, don't be so naughty. Yeah, 
<laughs> that would be fantastic. Sort of a photo lock screen. Hey, I would like to show you these four photos. And if you try to go outside I mean, the bounds of those really four photos, simple, like, it like pops that. up a password. It's, it's... it's not NSA proof. But you know, it's. I mean, I'm more concerned about the physical handoff. I don't want the phone to drop. I don't want the wet fingers and slipping and anything else. But I then continued that that we should all because remember the talk goes on, and you're always going to get those people that say I have nothing to hide, no matter what. But I want to get the idea of you should have a safe space, and everyone assumes that your bedroom or the, the, you're inside of your car, or something like that. That's your own personal space, like your cell phone. And you don't let people violate it. You don't leave your car doors open. You don't let, leave your door open to your room and let anybody in. You say, no, this is my space. If you want in, you have to ask me. Your phone should be the same way. So... And I, I, think, I think there's really even... Going down to a, a level of a society, there's there's a societal need for secrets, for privacy, for certain things, right? Uh, we we have, and hopefully all of us use, the doors attached to our restrooms because, you know, taking care of business in the light of society isn't socially acceptable. If you have no secrets, if you have no privacy, and you shun secrets and privacy at every opportunity – you're probably a weird person and you're probably being shunned by society actively. Secrets are a good thing. They're healthy. Sure, you can go overboard in either direction through privacy or openness. A healthy middle ground I mean, we're is not the saying best place that to be. Everything in your public life you want to you want to remove. What we're saying is, and we're not saying that your IRS and your social security numbers are your only secrets. We're saying that you should not want to tell everyone everything at all times. So then we started, well, we have nothing to hide. And, and, and I keep on saying, I don't like this question because I have nothing to hide implies that you're, that, that somebody's going after you. And I think the question is, let's flip it around. Are you okay? And this is what I said. Are you okay with someone saying, give me this? And you're just saying, okay, give me, let, I, I want to see all the photos of you as a teenager. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with, I want to see the street view of your house and the inside of your house and this and that. I want to know your kid names. I want to know your wife's name. I want to know this. I want to know that. Are you okay with just giving it to them? Because that's essentially what you're doing. Yeah, if there's, there's certain things that, you know, you just, that people don't need to know, right? There's, there's, um, and it's, it seems like it's less common nowadays, but uh, back in time, I, I don't want to sound old. I don't think I'm that old. But, uh, you know, there, there used to be a, well, don't ask these certain questions of people because it's none of your business. And the none of your business line seems to have just fallen away, uh, you know, as the years have gone by. That, you know, everything is now everyone's business all the time because why not? And in some things, shouldn't be that. If you don't, it's like you said, we don't talk about politics. You don't talk about religion. If somebody just all of a sudden just engaged you in all these things and just to be contrary, you're giving up information that you, you may not want to get into an argument right now. So the idea of you have nothing to hide is you may say, you know what, being completely political all the time may not be the most appropriate thing. So you know what? I'm going to scale it back. I'm not going to wear a big Republican or Democratic t-shirt and everything I say is going to be contrary to everybody else with a different opinion. You say, you know what? I'm just, I'm just not going to talk about politics because you know what? I want to have a good time today. Yeah. You, you choose not to engage. Right. And it's, it's not necessarily, a, a, you know, a closely guarded secret. It's not your ATM pin code you're you're keeping behind. It's, you know, it's something more trivial than that. It's something that's private's probably the wrong word, but it doesn't have to be public. It doesn't have to be out there all the time. Uh, you can have these, you know, little secrets or little things you don't talk about, and it's perfectly healthy. It's perfectly fine. And uh, frankly, you know, you should have things that you don't talk about all the time. Uh, you know, at work, 
people selectively engage in conversations of, eh, you know, everyone's talking about politics. I know my views are, are kind of crazy out there and tend to cause fights. And I don't, I just want to get work done today. I'm not going to bother with that. So, so we can you don't. With, and people said, again, they're still arguing with, uh, I don't have anything to hide. And if that's not going to get to, what about strangers? So I gave three examples. Somebody picking up your phone or four examples, your, uh, the government, your employer, and maybe the college that you went to. And the idea is you're applying to college. Nowadays, if you don't think the college admissions process, somebody there, the intern there, is searching you up, you are mistaken. You are mistaken. They are absolutely looking you up. They're trying to engage you. They're going to try and follow you on Twitter. They're going to follow you on Facebook. They want to see what you're about. Because, I mean, they don't want to... They want somebody who's going to fit with the profile of the school. And if you're just crazy on Twitter or on Facebook, are you going to be crazy at the school? So you got to be ready for them to absolutely look through everything about you that you give them. Because remember, you're volunteering that information. Oh, we lost Tom. Uh, yeah, uh, now I think I'm here. You are. So... Sorry about that, everyone. So we're having really bad audio tonight. So we talked about, so again, they're saying, so then the next thing is you get your job and you have employers, right? So you get you get offered a job and now they're saying, we need your social media information to make sure you're good. And everyone said, oh, this is horrible. I think unanimously they passed it in, in Congress, the idea that it's horrible. But yet no, none of the 50 states, maybe one said, um, yeah, this is really bad. The rest of the 49 states are saying there are laws pending that an employer shouldn't ask you about your about your social networking profile. Yeah, when when you're posting stuff on, you know, on Twitter or Facebook, uh, if you're posting, oh, I just bought all these drugs, man, and I'm selling them, selling them all day, and your employer or you know the college admissions board is going through your public Facebook posts and saying. Do we really want a guy that's obsessed with, you know, uh, you know, selling drugs to people on the street to be part of this college? Do we really want that person, you know, as part of our company? No, of course not. So you know, watch what you do, even, even if it's not something like selling drugs, um, even if it's something like I have very strong political connections towards, you know, this one area that happens to be sort of controversial – that could hurt you in some instances. Um, it, it would be good to, you know, you don't have to, I'm not going to advocate censoring yourself or censoring your speech on something you care about, but uh, at the same time, you have to consider what's the value of making this public. Uh, is this going to help my cause? Is this going to help me? Is this going to come back and hurt me in some way in the future? Uh, and I'm sure everyone's been there where, you know, someone has seen something we've posted on social media and your foot instantly goes into your mouth. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have posted that. I shouldn't have commented on that. Uh, that was probably a dumb thing of me to do. That it wasn't We necessary. talked about Jennifer Lawrence and the other celebrities getting hacked. This is now over a year ago, probably 18 months ago. And a lot of people came out anti blaming the victim. Jennifer Lawrence, if you didn't want these photos out there, you shouldn't have taken them. And we said, no, you're allowed to take those photos. She didn't go out and say, here, come hack me. She didn't put them on Facebook. She did not leave her phone at a bar and have someone take it. These were her private pictures that she took on what everyone deems is their only camera, their cell phone. And they were left, they were there, they were secure, but somebody hacked her password and got on. And they eventually were caught and they eventually did get, I don't know if it was jail time, but they got something. But I just didn't like the fact that they said, well, you shouldn't have posted it. That's not what we're saying. We're saying she had a secret. She did a reasonable expectation of privacy and someone violated that, which is against the law. And then, yeah, there's, then we there's want to talk about misdemeanor between... the government. So a government is a, is a stranger. There's there's definitely a difference what? between uh, you know illegally accessing information or hacking into someone's account or accessing private posts or swiping right on a phone that isn't yours. 
Um, it, there's a difference between that and looking at someone's, you know, publicly posted information uh, that they put out there for the world without any sort of boundaries or controls on it. So then let's talk about, lastly, the government. So I said that we're just unsure of what the government can do. And this is the whole reason for the podcast. We don't know what the NSA can do. We keep on saying, well, they're not going to spy on all our calls or they're not going to spy on Americans or they're not going to be reading our text messages. And then we find out through Edward Snowden or, or any of the other leaks that we see that everything we thought they couldn't do, they absolutely do. We, we just heard recently that they're using Stingray on some guy who bought or stole, allegedly, $50 worth of fried chicken. We have – why are they going after fi somebody who's stealing $50? You caught him already. Why did you need to, to completely violate his privacy? Yeah, which is absolutely ridiculous. So, so now – so if you want to say that there's nothing on your phone – you have to look at the other things, the metadata that we keep on talking about. So the first thing is you're giving physical access. If you're giving someone physical access to your phone by showing them a picture or whatever it is, you are saying, here, don't do anything with this. I'm trusting you. But they can easily, if they have physical access, do anything they want. And we said that they can look through your uh, phone records or they can look at your photos or they can look at look at your Snapchat profile. And from there, they can... They're you. They have all the credentials stored on their phone, and they can do whatever they want. So, so giving someone just physical access to your phone is probably one of the worst things that you can do. Yeah, it, and then it, as soon as you hand over a device, you know all bets are off, um, unless you're actively supervising the individual. I mean, even or, there, you just got to be careful. Or group. I mean, if, if you, you know, hand your phone to the cops, if they ask nicely and say, hey, can we look at your phone? It's the exact same thing as a cop saying, hey, could we come in your house? Hey, could we look inside your car? It's a search. Uh, even if they're really nice about it, it's still a search. And anything they find can and will be used against you. You have agreed to be searched. So... Then we talked about permissions, and we've done enough shows about this where we talk about permissions. And I'll just say that I don't know what the right answer is because people get permission. I, I call permission to death. They get asked either at the beginning when they install an app, would you like to do this, 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 and this, and everyone hits yes. Or they get UAC like on Windows, or do you want to do this? Or on Android now with Android N, do you want to allow access to your camera? Do you want to allow access to your contacts? Do you want to act allow access to your location and people are not very well informed of what that means and i don't know what the solution is i thought the solution would be to ask them but it seems like the solution is not to ask them and let the people who care about it go further in but i don't know i i, I wish they can say these are obvious permissions and these are like fringe permissions yeah i i think like my mom got asked to the hangout message I think the latest Android build does it helps in some way, but depending on the app, it can be really onerous. It can be, you know, an app flashlight saying, oh, hey, I need access to your contacts and text messages and phone calls and your flashlights and your camera, and I need access to all these things right now before I'll leave them work, which is just the wrong way to do it. First off, you don't need access to all that. Second off, it's lazy app that uh, Google Maps. I loaded up one day and it said, hey, I can show you where your contacts are, like where their houses are, but I need to access your contact list to get those addresses. Is it cool? And it popped up the little Android permissions box. It's like, oh, that's cool. Yes, that would really help me out because I'm constantly typing in a single person's address. Um, so I love that. Now, I have loaded up apps where... It just requested access to my contacts list for no reason. I think it was a game that I had installed. And it said, hey, can I have your contacts? <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, you can't have my contacts. Uh, with the new Android version, you can say no to contacts. And certain features will be selectively enabled or disabled, which is really cool. If you install the Flashlight app and you hit no, you can't have my contacts, chances are the app will still work. 
minus whatever contact flashlight sharing feature the app was trying to enable. And the problem is, is my I called my mother. I hang out, whatever the version of FaceTiming on Hangouts is. We did a video call, and it asked her. Do you want to allow your location? Do you want to allow your contacts? Do you want to allow access to the camera, allow access to the microphone? And it scared her. And she goes, what, what is this about? And I keep on sa- and I said, they're asking for permission. And it's, well, what does that mean? And I, I don't want to, I don't want another button that says learn more, but I want a nice way or an intuitive way where learning more is, like you said, with the map, we, we just need to do this. Just some sort of couple line description somewhere that says this is what we need. And finally, I want to talk about tracking. Yeah, so, I, I, I completely agree. So, so the last thing is uh, we talked about tracking and, and it's hard to explain tracking just because no one exactly knows what it is. It's the idea that you go from website to website and they use cookies and persistent tracking methods to get you. But it's, if you're not giving it, if you're not handing over your phone or you're not giving developers permission, anything you do online is being tracked by your ISP, whether that's Verizon and their super cookies or Google because you're signed in on Android or who knows what Apple does on the iPhone, but you're being tracked from here to there. And if somebody wants something, you're leaving your, your fingerprints everywhere. So if the government needs something, they can just get it. It's, it's just that simple. They'll talk to Verizon, they'll talk to Apple, they'll talk to Google, they'll talk to anybody who's willing to listen, and we'll go from there. Yeah, it's it's a real issue. Um, and I, I had a thought there, but it completely disappeared <laughs> in me trying to fix my connectivity issues. So then... So, okay, so now that I scared you and we did everything, the last thing we have is, is well, security can't be retroactive. And what I'm trying to get there is, okay, so you're, you're this social butterfly everywhere. And now all of a sudden you, you listen to the security podcast, you binge watched us, you're at 116 episodes and you're like, okay, what do I do? Well, this is not a simple process. You can't tomorrow just all of a sudden be 100% secure. This is... This is long and painful. This took this took me 116 weeks to start caring. So you have to go slow. Figure out what what part of security do you care about, and then go from there. So if you want to start if you want to start deleting status messages, you can do that. But all of a sudden, if you just want to go dark, you can't you can't do it. It's impossible. And that's what we were trying to get on this podcast and on this show and everything else. Right. If if you you know try to band aid over the dam after there's a bunch of holes poked in it, there's there's no way to contain that. Right. The damage is already done. You can't uncrash the car after you crashed it. After you have a security incident, uh, you know putting the piece back together is very difficult and often impossible to do. Um, there's there are ways uh, to to steps to protect yourself and some of them aren't really hard you know enable two-factor authentication some of them make your lives easier like use a password manager um and we really try to give you know easy bite-sized security chunks that people can latch on to to you know help improve uh you know to make the target on their back as small as possible so the chances are less likely that they'll have a security incident. You have to start today. You can't start after the I mean, fact. if you start as simple as tomorrow, locking your car doors, you've taken one step. If you started from like logging off your computer or hitting Windows L when you leave to go to the bathroom, you've taken another step. I mean, you just start with really simple steps and then you get that down and you just move on from there. Start and And as you start doing it, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Because what you're doing is you're taking the time that you didn't do it. You're adding in smaller chunks. If you had, remember, security is inconvenient. It's, it's if you want this, if you want to be super secure, then have three computers, one that's on the internet or run in a VM. And we've spoken about that. But if you want to actually have fun on the internet and do things, you just have to be, have a little common sense. And I want to just finish with, I just want to finish with, 
and we said this, it's okay to have secrets. It's and and I said this at, on the on the speech. You can have secrets and nobody should tell you otherwise. If your friends don't allow you to have these secrets and and they'll just spill the beans all the time, maybe you should reevaluate that because you are it's your right to have secrets and it's I don't want to say that they sh everyone should understand, but it's also your job to make sure that you're secure because no one else is going to do that for you. Right. And secrets are a healthy, normal part of just living, of being human. Everyone has secrets, and frankly, everyone should have some secrets. If you don't have secrets, if you don't even have a little secret, you're probably really boring, and no one wants to be boring. Everyone's got something to hide, right? Um, so when FBI Director Jim Comey says, well, if you have something to hide, you're clearly doing something wrong. No, he's being disingenuous. Ask Director Jim Comey when the last real fight him and his spouse had. Ask him for all the gory details. Ask him for every name that they call each other, because Everyone who has been married or been in a serious relationship has had really horrible fights with their significant others, right? That we don't tell people, we don't go into details. It's just, that's not, A, something people don't want to know unless we're celebrities. And B, it's just not cool. It, it kills the mood. Um, so Jim Comey has secrets, right? Uh, James Clapper has secrets. The, uh, I believe he's the NSA director. Um, Secrets are normal. They're fine. They don't mean you're a criminal. It just means that you're human, and there are some parts of your life that you don't want public. And you should, and others should, expect that to be completely normal. That's just so, a fact of life. So we'll end Secrets on have that to be note. Here. I just want to end with just some some other things. By the way, I first want to invite everyone again to our WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp group is awesome. We're having a lot of fun in it. Tweet at one of us. We'll get you in. And and I don't think we're overburdening. It's like you're getting 100,000 messages a day. But we are having some really good discussions there. And obviously, the more, the better. Other than that, I think we're good. Yes. And but, if, if, you were, if you are in the group and you are getting annoyed by the messages, you can mute that selected chat and you won't get notified about it but you can always just go back to the group when you see that you know it's turned to bold or you've got messages there so you can interact at your own pace without the constant interruptions all day i know i've done that when i've been on programming assignment i've stepped away from the group for a couple hours and uh, it works really well people i mean we have people from uh different time zones so while you may think everyone's sleeping it's not so it's it's not a we're gonna spam you messages all throughout the day, but you can just turn them off or snooze them or whatever it is and pop in and out and everything's okay. So I just want to say that. And WhatsApp did release a desktop client and we it just came out about an hour ago, but we're still looking at it, but it looks identical to the web client. So if it's identical and the web client's in a web tab and the desktop client is the same web tab, just siloed out, I don't know what to tell you. I would just stick with the web client easier have a link to your desktop and go from there so on that note i want to give a big thank you to time warner cable and we will go from there yes we would like to uh announce that time warner is the sponsor of the horrible audio and of this episode Wheeler. and you can write your congress about so, that anyway everyone we will see you next week and tom uh, see you, everyone